And we check in again with two people who've helped us keep up with the continuing crisis. Arjun Makijani is an engineering special, engineer specializing in nuclear fusion. He's the president of the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research. Kenji Kushida specializes in Japanese studies at Stanford University. Welcome back to both of you. Arjun, first let me start with you. How serious are these new revelations about the water contamination? Well, the last time we spoke, there were we talked about the leak and there were radiation levels that could give a worker an annual radiation dose in 12 minutes. Well, more recently, there have been reports that the radiation levels near another tank are 1,800 millisieverts per hour. This is an extremely high level of radiation. A few hours basically constitutes a lethal dose. So now we're talking about radioactive contamination in these tanks, the, the liquid stored in these tanks, that are very highly radioactive. And so these leaks are extremely problematic for the workers and for management. And is this, is this something they just discovered? Or how, what, what suddenly causes the much more serious amount of levels? Well, the best I can understand from all the confusing information there's out there is the first measurement was done with an instrument that only went up to 100 millisieverts and maxed out. Out. Yeah. So now they're making more measurements and they're finding there are more contaminated spots um, and apparently more leaks. So I'm not quite clear what the company knows when, but the information is kind of dribbling out and the government is clearly concerned that, that uh, the situation is getting more out of control. Well, Kenji Kushida, you pick up on that because we yes, there's the company and then there's the government. Clearly the government is stepping in with much more force now, right? Yeah, absolutely, um, because the next election in three years uh, is going to definitely reflect uh, their response on uh, this nuclear issue, because they're essentially a pro-nuclear party that just won a landslide election. And so if they can't credibly manage the operator's uh, rescue efforts, and the operator which clearly seems to be unable to deal with the worst parts of the situation, then the government is on the hook. But from the outside, it looks like this is taking a long time to get to even the kind of uh, uh, understanding of the contamination levels that, never mind getting to a lot of the more serious work that still needs to be done. What's the sense in Japan, as far as you can tell, about the levels of, uh, of uh, I don't know, desperation or urgency there? Yeah, well, um, similar to what we said last time, the operator's reputation and people's confidence in it, which was already at an all-time low, is now even lower. And after the government essentially de facto nationalized the operator about a year ago and replaced top management, people hoped that the ability of the operator to deal with some of these problems would have been enhanced. But some of the media reports coming from Japan um, are saying things like subcontractors are now uh, leaking information that literally leaking information that uh, the tanks, thousand or so tanks that they put together in great haste under severe cost pressure from TEPCO, which was before it was nationalized, right after the uh, uh, disaster, they were put together with uh, bolts, but not welded together. And so some of these subcontractors are saying, well, in the long run, you'd even medium run, you'd expect them to start springing leaks. So. Uh, Clearly, the operator hasn't been on top of the situation, and people are getting fairly nervous about that. So, Arjun Makijani, uh, explain this idea of the ice wall. It sounds strange. How, how exactly <clears throat> would it work, and, and how much has it been tried before? Well, I don't know that an ice wall like this has been tried before. Um, it's like building a dam underground, but with ice, by freezing all the poor water in the soil, all soil ice. So there's water coming in from uphill through the site and going into the ocean, all underground, it's, a, it's an aquifer, some of that water contacts the uh, molten fuel and is becoming contaminated. And they hope to build, to freeze the soil, basically, with a giant freezing machine, just like your freezer at home. They put uh, cooling coils in the soil, lots and lots of them, takes an enormous amount of electricity and they would freeze it. Of course, it contains the water behind it like a dam, but eventually, it's going to overtop the dam as it did before. They had another wall that they built. They, they chemically impregnated the soil to kind mm -hmm. of solidify it, and that is what is overflowing into the sea 300 tons a day. So. Well, well, so it's been done before, but not on this scale, you think? So, it, it, I mean, is it a, how would you describe it? Is it an experiment? Is it a kind of stab at something? Uh... 
It is an experiment, yeah. and I think it's a it's a risky experiment because if the power fails, you know, just like if your when the power goes out with your refrigerator, uh, everything will defreeze in the defrost in the freezer. So if this ice melts suddenly and it's blocking an enormous amount of contaminated water behind it, then you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, the tanks are themselves something of a threat if if there's another earthquake and this highly contaminated water gets into the ocean. And so they've got a very couple of very, very serious problems of containing the water. And then Kenji Kushida, there 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 is still, as we said, the long term here, which I heard talk about decades to decommission the plant, for example. Yeah, some of the estimates are a minimum of 40 years to decommission the plant. So this idea of frozen underground walls, you know, a massive spending into innovative infrastructure projects can be a good thing, but when it's the last line of defense designed as a permanent solution to a almost seemingly intractable problem, I think the general public would be much more comforted if they saw several options out there rather than all the eggs being put into this potentially risky, unknown and untested solution that may or may not work. You were talking about the politics earlier. Is there any uh, uncertainty as to the will to stay with this for the, the decades that you're talking about? Well, there's no choice. Uh, um, given that the party is pro-nuclear and that they do not face elections for three years, their interest is definitely to do whatever possible, uh, because if this gets truly out of hand in a much greater sense than now, then they will be, their heads will be on the chopping block in the next election. But they'd like to avoid that. That being said, the, it's not like there's a set of technical uh, solutions that are easily possible here uh, that can be chosen from. So uh, in, the, in the very long term, you, they do need to try to stay in power. So you'd expect them to put as many resources as possible. And as we do see, they are moving, but they need to move much more quickly, as most uh, general public would agree. All right. Kenji Kushida, Arjun Makijani, thank you both again very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.